buckle up. That's gonna be intense. A couple of days ago, a trailer of the game called Unrecord was released, showcasing absolutely realistic graphics gameplay made in Unreal Engine. When I watched it, I immediately thought that there is something off and oddly familiar. I was tired from people reacting to it and watched this trailer frame by frame looking for graphics artifacts, animation glitches and kind of flaws that didn't give me understanding of how it was made. I've spent two nights researching every frame on this first location, finding every Megascan asset developers used in order to assemble this level. And today I can finally deconstruct how it was built, we will look into light setup, post-processing volume settings, camera motion, how HDRI helps to make detailed reflections and why final game might not look like what we see in the trailer. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are there for the first time, I share post-production experience working as the lead and real engine artist in post-production company, and I'm focusing on automotive CGI and animation. Yet, as I use Unreal Engine on a daily basis for my work, I know few tricks which developers of Unrecord might have used. But before we start this breakdown of Unrecord trailer, I must warn you that my words should be taken with a small grain of salt. Obviously, I cannot guarantee you that what I show you today was exactly how developers did it, as I only do offline renders final delivery, which is not targeted for the real time. That's why my light setup techniques and post-processing settings might be different from the developers. And without further ado, let's get started. First thing that I did, I found all the Megascan assets I could spot for this level and started assembling something similar. I will be creating only first room from the trailer. Please excuse level of details for my environment as I don't have all assets and not enough time for it. I believe developers spent days or even weeks for this level to make it look as good as possible and they placed things precisely. When I finished with the level design, I start lighting the scene. For this case, I used HDRI backdrop to light the scene. I found this HDRI on polyhaven.com as it has really smooth light and foggy vibe just like in an record trailer. Now we need to set up the post-process settings so the exposure will be adjusting to our environment. At this point, I'm not certain which approach developers used. They either set post-process volume with color grading and exposure setup, or used some sort of LUT to get this color palette. Or even baked the lights to optimize the performance. I will try to match it as much as possible using color grading tools within Unreal Engine, and if I won't be successful, I probably fine-tune it on the post with DaVinci Resolve to match colors better, as I don't have any information how Developers use the post-processing settings, what LUTs they used, I don't know, exposure curves or any other settings, because there are a lot of post-processing materials which can give you different effects. I will be fine-tuning the final footage in DaVinci Resolve if I'm not able to match the picture inside of the Unreal Engine. Now we will talk about reflections and how they was done. Did the developers use lumen light or did they use the ray tracing? I'm pretty sure that developers used HDRIs plus Lumen, because there are a few things that gives it away. If we look in reflections on translucent materials, like for example glass on this truck in the trailer, developers relied on power of Lumen, and so will I. What gives Lumen away that it uses screen space reflections? For example, there you can see that reflection of the side mirror disappears when it is covered by the metal column from the player view. That means it used Lumen, not ray tracing. For example, here we can repeat this effect. If I look from this side on the glass reflection and abstract the side mirror view with a column, we will see that the reflection of the mirror disappears, because mirror now is out of the player visibility area and will not be reflected. If I switch translucency reflections to ray tracing, then we will still see the reflection of the side mirror even when it's covered by the column, because ray tracing tries to give us physical accurate result. You might ask the question right now, how the hell we can see the whole building reflecting in the glass of the truck in that case as ceiling and windows are outside of the screen space and should not be reflected. And this is typical HDRI trick. If you use HDRI backdrop, this one I have also from Polyheaven, or put HDRI file in Skylight specified cube map, Unreal in this case will combine reflections of global lighting and local objects giving you better results. So I assume the following. 
This factory or part of it was photo scanned by developers and they captured HDRI of it and put it in skylight specified cube map or HDR backdrop to match light easily for this scene and get nice reflections on glass materials. Now following with the camera movement. I believe animation was done with motion capture. It can be done with multiple devices as HTC controller or any other tracking device. Why I made the guess that the camera movement was motion captured? Well, because it reminds real police camera footage with all the shakes and movement of real people, but it would be hard to play a game with such camera movement and amount of shake. Dunno if developers are going to use camera shake blueprints for real gameplay and keep camera movement similar to the trailer or will have this option to be disabled in settings by the player. Anyway, making camera more cinematic but using real game running is absolutely fine and is general practice for the game development. Ok, let's get back to the camera motion capture. In my case, I will be using LiveLink camera app on my iPhone. How to connect it and set it up I will not be covering in this video as it would make it probably 20 minutes longer. In few words, what I did. I hooked up my iPhone to virtual camera within Unreal Engine and just was walking inside my apartment while recording camera movement with Take Recorder. That creates a sequence which I can render after all is done. In Sequencer, I attach Spotlight to the camera to make imitation of flashlight and check animation before render. Also, I have a question about excessive amount of motion blur we see in the trailer. Why they did it? I checked few police body cam footages and the amount of motion blur there was very low, as I believe these cameras are filming with high shutter speeds to prevent motion blur for more clear picture. So in trailer amount of motion blur was increased to give more cinematic feeling or to hide some flaws in animations or environment design. What I can tell regarding animations? Very good job was done there. Various reload animations, they don't repeat during the trailer, feels like motion capture was done by people who know how to handle a gun. It feels realistic, despite few moments when during animation blends, models are going through each other. But otherwise it was phenomenal and the most impressive for me. Now my opinion why we will not see the gameplay as it's shown in the trailer. The trailer shows too realistic camera of movement, it will be hard to play like this, but definitely very pleasing to watch. Also trailer shows great amount of really high quality motion blur, which I thought was not possible for Unreal, but when I tried it myself, now I can see that it surely can be done. Developers claimed they didn't use movie render queue to render the scene and captured footage from executable file. I assume settings are probably set to very high, but my RTX 1490 didn't struggle with my scene I created. So I also tend to believe it is possible to make it run real time. And I'm not good at optimizing stuff in Unreal because real time is not my priority at work. Also, if we look at the screenshots in Steam, we will spot that it looks more like a game, but not like trailer, which is absurdly realistic. Now let's see what I managed to make alone in one day in comparison with Unrecord trailer using real-time camera movement captured with LiveLink Cam. Well, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty close. For one person, definitely it is. I need to make myself clear that I don't want to show anyone in bad light. Purpose of this video is to explain how to achieve something similar and inspire people to learn. I made guesses and assumptions on how this footage was recorded, but it doesn't mean I'm absolutely right. You can see that this scene can run on my computer in real time and when I rendered it I didn't use any anti-aliasing in the movie render queue. So that gets me to the conclusion that developers made really hard job on the light setup and on the post-processing volume settings and those are main keys how to achieve the cinematic look in the videos when you film it or in games. Developers have done tremendous amount of work and I hope they will succeed with their project because it looks like true next-gen and the most important thing is that you can do it too. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.